Ancient Egypt by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or a pen and a highlighter. The Pharaohs. Pharaohs were the supreme rulers of ancient Egypt. They had absolute power. This is total, complete. They were the generals and religious leaders all at the same time. So needless to say, they had a lot that they were responsible for. They built huge monuments to demonstrate their power. It wasn't just pyramids. They built obelisks. Do you know what an obelisk is? Well, you've seen one if you've been to Washington. The Washington Monument would be an example of an obelisk. Please take a moment and highlight generals and religious leaders at the same time and supreme rulers. Pharaoh Narmer, also known as Menes, or even Aha. He was the first pharaoh in the first dynasty of the early dynastic period. And he reigned from 3100 BCE, at least around that. You will see numbers as high as 3400, but as low as 2950. We're not sure. And he's known for being the first person to unify Upper and Lower Egypt. And once he was done, and he conquered them, he decided to wear a pochette, which is a double crown, to symbolize Upper and Lower Egypt. The white, Upper Egypt, was to follow the people of Horus. Red, Seth were the people of Lower Egypt. And he also built the first capital city of Memphis. Please take a moment and highlight first to unify Upper and Lower Egypt and wore a pochette. Here is an example of the double crown. The white is upper, the red lower, and here is it together. Over here is what is called the Narmer Palette. This was a plaque built to demonstrate Narmer taking control of Upper and Lower Egypt. When we get to hieroglyphics and art, you'll notice how he's bigger than anything else in the palette, which means he's the most important person. Pharaoh Khufu. He's the second pharaoh in the fourth dynasty of the Old Kingdom and he reigned from about 2551 to 2528 BCE. And he's known as the Great Pyramid Builder. Seriously, he built an and was entombed in the Great Pyramid of Giza, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world and one of the biggest buildings in the world up until the, 19, the, the 1200s CE. There is little known about him, though. He is described as either cruel and a, a harsh ruler or powerful but kind. No one knows. We're not sure. He emphasized, though, supreme power, declaring himself a god. Please highlight Great Pyramid Builder, Built and Entombed, Great Pyramid of Giza. Little is known about him. Now, one of the two things we do have is this little statue that you see here. It's not very big though, about six inches at most. And here is his temple, the Great Pyramid of Giza. Pharaoh Senesret I. He is the second pharaoh in the 12th dynasty of the Middle Kingdom. And he ruled from 1971 to 1928 BCE. And he's known as one of the strongest pharaohs of his, not only his dynasty, but of the Middle Kingdom. Some of the greatest works of Egyptian literature are written during this reign. Please take a moment and highlight greatest works of Egyptian literature written his reign. And here is a picture of him. As you notice here, he's 
holding Ankh. Pharaoh Hatshepsut. She was the fifth pharaoh in the 18th dynasty of the New Kingdom. And she reigned as pharaoh from 1473 to 1458 BCE. She is the first known female pharaoh, and to do this she wore male clothing and had a fake beard, just like male pharaohs. Now, for the first five years of her reign, she served as regent, which means a stand-in, kind of like a, uh, a watchful person for her stepson, Tuthmosis III. But she didn't give up his power until a mysterious death. Do you think it was him or someone that served him? The world may never know. Now, she was a part of the golden age of ancient Egypt. Her stepson is a part of it, too, and it was an age of great prosperity. She encouraged peace and trade and sent even an expedition to the east coast of Africa that returned with ivory, leopard skins, and trees that made incense. Please take a moment and highlight first known female pharaoh, encouraged peace and trade. And here's a picture of her and her in a sphinx form. And here's her stepson, Tuthmosis III. He was the sixth pharaoh in the 18th dynasty, the one right after her in the New Kingdom. He was a great warrior who expanded the empire more than any other ruler. And he had a complex, complicated relationship, to say the least, with his stepmom. As I said earlier, he might have killed her. We do know that he had her name removed from many cartouches where it was placed around Egypt. A cartouche is kind of like a nameplate, though. And not to be outdone, he built over 50 temples. Not too bad, huh? Please take a moment and highlight Great Warrior. Complicated relationship with stepmom. And here's a picture of him and him wearing the crown. Aknen Hatten, and he ruled a little bit later in the 18th dynasty of the New Kingdom. Now, when he came to power, his father warned him to be fearful of the priests of Amun. To counteract this, what he did was he started a monotheistic religion the first the world had ever seen, based off of the sun disk god, Aten. And in doing so, he shut down all of their, the polytheistic and other Egyptian gods, temples. Doesn't make him overly popular. There's also some rumors that he might have been Tutankhamun's father, King Tut, but we're not sure about that. Please take a moment and highlight started monotheistic religion, Sundus God Aten. And here's a picture of him. Front and, of course, the side view. Next up, we have Tutankhamun, also known as King Tut. And he also ruled in the 18th dynasty during the New Kingdom. And he was two, one, he was two pharaohs after... Aknenhaten. There was a one in between. And he's known as the Boy King because he died at 18. Fun fact, he got married at 9. Any gentlemen in listening to this want to get married at 9 years old? I certainly didn't. But I didn't live in ancient Egypt. Now his tomb was discovered by Howard Carter and it was the first one fully intact that had all of its treasures preserved. And it re-sparked an interest in Egypt. And one of the things we know he did was he reversed the religion created by his, might be his father, Aknenhaten, and he brought back the Egyptian gods. 
However, unfortunately for him, he's much more famous in death than in life. And here is a picture of one of the pieces found. Ooh, before that, let's take a moment and highlight. Reverse the religion created by Akhenaten. Tomb discovered by Howard Carter. And here is a picture of his mummy sarcophagus that was found. Pharaoh Ramses II, and he's the third pharaoh in the 19th dynasty of the New Kingdom. He reigned from about 1290 to 1224 BCE, and he was a famous military leader and master builder. I guess that's why he got the name Ramses the Great. He was a captain in the army at the age of 10. Ready to lead some uh, armed forces into combat right now, guys? Eh? No? Too bad. Anyway, his most famous accomplishments for, as a builder were the monuments of Abu Sibyl and the temple columns at Karnak. His mummy is one of the best preserved ever found. And he's thought, although it's not proven yet, to be the mummy mentioned in the Passover story. Please take a moment and highlight famous military leader, master builder, monuments Abu Sibyl, and Karnak. Mummy best preserved. Here is a picture of him, his mummy, and Abu Sibyl. Looks familiar, doesn't it? It's the one from the first half that I'll show you in just a second, but notice the size of the people compared to these. That's pretty spectacular. And here's a night view. The end.